Hello, welcome to Kimmel Bay Church's vlog. We're continuing with our study from Glenn Scrivener's book, Reading Between the Lines. And today our reading is headed Going the Extra Mile. It's from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, reading from verses 38 to 48. He, Glenn Scrivener is encouraging us not just skip read, but to read between the lines, what the reading's really saying to us. We think that going the extra mile means giving five-star service when much less would do. It's when you go above and beyond the call of duty to offer something special. But that's not really what it meant originally. In Matthew chapter 5, 38 to 41, Jesus gives three parallel responses to being wronged. We are to turn the other cheek to violent aggressors, if someone takes your shirt, give them your coat as well, and then to the extra mile. It's not hard to imagine um, in the first century Judea that the Roman soldiers compelled any Jewish, Jewish passerby to carry whatever baggage they had at a mile, ordering them heavy packs sometimes, I would imagine. When a Roman soldier told you to go a mile, you didn't argue. Otherwise, there are consequences. So, what should the Christian do? They should say, our reading tells us, a mile. Tell you what, you look tired. Why don't I carry it two miles? I reckon you could do with a break. Going the extra mile is not about putting in extra hours to impress the boss. Unless, that is, it was bully a bullying boss who was compelling you to work beyond what was reasonable. Imagine if we responded to the bullying boss by tit for tat. Our boss compels us to work under unreasonable conditions. We grudgingly submit to their regime, but we get back at them in other ways. What will be the response? Surely, a continuation of the cycle evil for evil, for more evil and more evil, and so on. Or imagine if we responded by shrinking back, passively taking on burden after burden. We never say anything because we don't want confrontation, and it grinds us down into the dirt. We feel worthless. Some people imagine this is what Jesus is saying to us. He's suggesting that, that we do give in. But no, he's not. Jesus wants there to be a confrontation, yet it's a very different way of confronting another person. It's the shock of presenting your persecutor with a willing sacrifice. This is a third kind of response, an unnatural, a supernatural response. Jesus says, shock the boss by working over overtime. That's very different. It's not answering evil with evil. It's not accepting evil as the norm. It's confronting evil with good. It's standing firm in unconditional blessing. Only this breaks the cycle of evil because it says to the bully, it hasn't worked, has it? You, wanted to diminish, you want me to diminish myself either by descending to your level or bowing under your power play. But here I am rising above it. You haven't won. I stopped the cycle of aggression. I'm outmaneuvering you. I have entirely changed the terms on which we are relating. And my grace will convict you more than justice ever could. You see, if you don't respond evil for evil, then you put yourself in charge. Then you can take control of the situation. You handle it how you want to handle it. So, how does Jesus go the extra mile? Well, unjustly, the Roman soldiers compelled him to carry a load that didn't belong to him. And yet he did not merely take it on him, take himself that burden, the cross. He took the sins of the world on his shoulders as well. For those with eyes to see it, we're confronted. But the confrontation is not payback for our evil. We're confronted challenged when we see his willing sacrifice. We would have been in the crowd probably, shouting, 
crucify him, because we don't have shouted anything else in that crowd. And he repays us by opening wide his arms. It's not his justice, but his grace that shocks us, and we are won over. Going the extra mile is not about hard work, and it's not about no bowing to injustice. It's the counter-conditional grace that shocks and wins the world, says Glenn Scrivener. It's about tipping the balance from payback to offering a favour. No wonder Christians can be thought to be a bit mad at times. We don't, or we shouldn't, follow normal patterns of behaviour, do we? I'm following a short study on the Holy Spirit, and I'm reminded that when um, I asked Jesus to come into my life, he gave me a wonderful gift, the Holy Spirit, to guide me. And Paul tells us in Romans 8, verse 14, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received the Spirit that makes you fearful. Instead, you receive God's Spirit when he adopted you as his own children. I confess that I've never used a sat-nav or a GPS system, ever. I'd rather look at a map albeit on my smartphone. With modern GPS, my son and his family keep track of, track of each other. My eldest son has eight children from 14 to 29, all still at home, mostly. And yes, they like to keep an eye on each other. With modern GPS, my son can track exactly where they are and they can track him too. I don't know whether many people would want this because it, I suppose it depends where you're going and whether you want anybody to know, but they love it. God's GPS system is his Holy Spirit, living in us, guiding us, giving us courage to react when we are challenged and to act with a less challenging response. But also it means he's keeping an eye on us too. I once had someone who would try to goad me into an argument or a sharp response. I think so that they could eventually come back at me and say, oh, and you call yourself a Christian. But my greeting always was, hi, how are you today? And the surprise on their face was very rewarding. In the last few verses of our reading today, Jesus tells us that we should love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. If you only love those who love you, what reward is there in that, says Jesus? Even pagans do that. You are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's why we need the Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit, living in us. We can never do this on our own. Thanks for joining in. God bless you.